Greetings and salutations, everybody. It is Joe coming to you live from Optimus Prime's HQ here in Northeast Pennsylvania. Now, let me backtrack for a second because I just did a live video and apparently Facebook Lives suck lately. The third time I've done a live in the past several weeks and the audio is choppy, the quality is choppy, doesn't matter what I use, internet, mobile data, Facebook, ugh. So I'm gonna record this and I'm going to post and repeat what I just spent 15 minutes sharing in my life. But that's okay, because it's worth it, because I enjoy it, and I enjoy chatting with all of you, even if it's just virtually. So uh, what I actually just spent all this time doing was sharing a little bit about my experience with Dakota this week. Now, uh, those of you who have been monitoring, you know that tomorrow we have a video coming out, uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time here on Facebook, or uh, 9.30 on YouTube, and that is, is a video that will reveal what we did this past Tuesday with this young boy who was escorted from the hospital back to his house. And what I wanted to do is share with you what it all meant to me and, and kind of what it was like, because that's something that you don't really see or hear about in the video that you're gonna see. Um, so let me, let me give you some backstory here. Number one, um, this goes back to last year. So sometimes, you know how they say like, you know, um, one door opens, another closes sort of thing. So, or what is it, the other way around? One door closes, another opens. One of those two. I think it was a door closed and then a door opened. Um, last year, during the pandemic, uh, we did a bully awareness presentation at a school in Red Lion, Pennsylvania. Now, as you guys know, we do a lot of good things with Optimus. We do these bully awareness presentations. We do these uh, make-a-wish things. We do fundraisers, charities. Um, we do events, you know, we'll, we'll do anything that uh, brings joy to people or brings positivity to the world. What, whatever it is, you know, we're all about doing. So you guys know that, you've seen what we've done over time already. This particular instance kind of falls into that same category. Um, it goes back again to last year when I did this bully awareness presentation. I did it at a school and it was during the COVID pandemic height. So doing anything was near impossible. Like I wasn't going out at all because everything was shut down. So we got into this school, uh, Red Lion Elementary, I think it was. Right, no, Maisie Gable, Maisie Gable Elementary. And um, we coordinated with them to do a shorter version of our bully awareness presentation. Essentially what that meant was parking Optimus outside and bringing the classes out, one class or two classes at a time, and maybe spending 15 minutes with them. I'll talk to them for about 10 minutes on the topic of bullying and rising up to bullies, and then they spent the rest uh, extra five minutes just walking around Optimus, getting a picture, and then they went back inside. It was a more, much uh, shorter version of our normal presentation, but it accommodated the whole social distancing thing. So every time I do that version where it's shorter and not as much time, I always think to myself, man, I wish I had more time with these kids so that I could give them the full experience and tell them exactly you know, what I want to tell them. So I never really know if they go home saying, that was awesome, or yeah, it kind of could have been better sort of thing. Well, in this case, there was this young boy named Nolan who went home that day and was super stoked. He was excited to meet Optimus. He loved the presentation, and uh, he was all about um, sharing it with his mom and dad. So fast forward a little bit, his mom eventually reached out to me and said thank you for the opportunity and, and doing what we did, and, and I appreciated that. And then we stayed in touch a little bit over time, and um, she then proceeded to share with me in the summer of this year uh, story about this boy Dakota. So Dakota I didn't know prior. He's in the same uh, district as, as this family, as the school that I went to. Um, he was um, uh, sent to the hospital unexpectedly in June of this year and um, uh, had a pretty pretty grim diagnosis. We'll just kind of leave it at that. There's a brain tumor that he's been been battling and uh, it just kind of happened out of nowhere and it's a very aggressive brain tumor. So that is obviously difficult for him and, and difficult for his family. Well, there was, the point, there was a point where the doctors did not believe he had much time left. And, uh, you know, you start mentally preparing yourself, if you can even mentally prepare for that, um, of, of the possibility of, of saying goodbye to, uh, to Dakota. And, uh, you know, as a family member, and that's, that's, I don't even want to think about that. So what ended up happening was Dakota started getting better. He started improving. He started um, looking a little bit better. He started moving. He started talking. And he started defying these odds that were against him. And it was almost a miracle 
Um, you know, Miracle of Prayer, you could say it was something like that because he does have a very big following online. You can follow his journey on the Facebook group under the name Dakota's Journey. Um, but he has improved so much so that he was getting released from the hospital. Good job, Dakota, man. That's awesome. So I found out that he was uh, getting released from the hospital on Tuesday. Now, it just so happens that Sunday, this coming Sunday, two days from now, um, they're doing a car show for Dakota. So my original goal before even knowing about this release was uh, hoping that he would be home by then so that we can go to this car show but also bring Dakota with us and kind of make this this pomp and circumstance sort of entrance where we have all the, all the car owners lined up along the sidewalk, where we have a police and fire bringing us in, and Dakota's in the passenger seat of Optimus, and we just kind of roll up and make him feel like a king for that uh, few moments there. So that was my original plan, but with the uncertainty of um, you know, Dakota's ongoing roller coaster, we weren't really sure if we'd be able to even get him up there, let alone get him to the, the car show. Uh, so we decided to... Um, see about participating in this journey home on Tuesday. Now, the date happened to be July 20th, and if you guys have followed me even for just a short window of time, you know that July 20th is my mom's birthday, and my mom unexpectedly passed away in November of just last year. So this was the first birthday we're celebrating without her, and that made it very difficult for us as a family um, to decide what to do. Like. You know, do we stay home? Do we grieve? Do we celebrate my mom? Um, or do I do this thing where we're escorting Dakota? Like, I wanted to do both, and it, w it was really hard to, to figure that out as a family. But ultimately, we decided to, uh, to do this thing for Dakota because we know that's, that's what my mom would have wanted us to do. So um, with the help of Danielle, the mom that I had speak been speaking to, and her husband, John, they actually sponsored Optimus to come down and join in Dakota's drive home. And let me tell you, that drive home far exceeded anything I had in the back of my head. Anything that I would have thought was going to happen totally didn't happen. And it was light years beyond that to the point that it was ended up being my top, one of my top five experiences with Optimus. And you guys know I've done a lot of cool things with Optimus. This is in that top five. So you're going to see that all transpire in the video. Uh, but in a nutshell, what ended up happening was Dakota came out of the hospital. We were there to greet him. And uh, my original plan was to just escort the ambulance that he was going to be taking and uh, escort the ambulance home. Well, we got, or they got, state police involved, local police involved, fire departments involved, a motorcycle club involved, custom cars, towing company. They even got the DOT to approve me passing the way station that was open so I didn't have to pull over. So they, they kind of coordinated this massive experience to bring Dakota home. And unbeknownst to me, I was, I was just ready to escort him, and, and as cool as that would have been, that was it. So we're making this drive from the hospital. All of a sudden, there's a group of motorcycles waiting for us uh, by the exit, and they begin to roll with us. Then we uh, have a bunch of people waving. Then we get to his hometown, and there are dozens, if not hundreds of people waiting in different parts of this community, waving as we're passing by, holding signs for Dakota and to uh, motivate him and waving flags and just, it was such a showing of community and, and love and strength and support and positivity, something that you don't typically see online. So being part of that as it's transpiring and as it's unfolding and as I'm following Dakota home, I kept telling myself, oh my God, oh my God, this is unbelievable. So how do you, how do you, summarize that into a, a eight minute video that you're going to see tomorrow. Like you can't, you, you really can't understand what it was like unless you were there to be part of it. But I hope the video that I've put together, um, you know, does a good job in communicating and uh, relaying, you know, what that experience was like. We were able to get footage from a whole bunch of different people, different angles, people who were there and participated. Uh, so you will be able to see it from uh, very uh, different vantage points. Um, but man, the, the idea with me following Dakota was to instill the bravery and the courage and the motivation and the strength that a character like Optimus Prime portrays. You know, give him, give him that strength that, you know what, keep on fighting and, and you'll be okay. So that was my goal. But man, all these people and, and everything else that, that surrounded us and, and um, became part of this, this journey home, that is light years beyond what Optimus Prime can do on his own. So... Um, I just have to tell you, watch the video tomorrow. 
It's going to be 10 a.m. on Facebook Eastern Time or 9.30 on YouTube Eastern Time. Just type Optimus is here. You'll find our page. And um, give Dakota some love. More importantly, give him your prayers. I hope you um, understand that when I do these things with Optimus, I do them because I know that it's going to bring joy to people. And I know that um, it's going to become a memory that they'll always hold on to. And my hope, Dakota, if you're watching, is that the experience we provided is one you'll never forget. But more importantly, the experience that your community provided is one that you'll hold on to forever. So, ladies and gents, I would encourage you to watch the video tomorrow, and I want to say thank you to Dakota's parents, number one, for giving me the opportunity to share this experience, and number two, to Danielle and John for uh, giving me an opportunity and sponsoring Optimus to actually come down there and uh, cover the expenses that we incurred in order to do so. I couldn't thank you all enough for everything you've done to make this a day none of us will forget. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Dakota, feel better soon, man, because don't forget my promise. I want to get you to that first day of school in Optimus. And I know, I don't like, looking, I don't like going to school either, man. I, I wasn't a fan of school, but it's, it's cool to roll up to school in Optimus Prime, don't you think? So make sure you get better real soon, man, so that we can take you to that first day, all right? All of you, thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. And as I always like to say, leave behind a legacy worthy of a prime and do great things so that your great-grandkids will talk great things about you. Take care, everybody. See you tomorrow.